This is the third video in a series of videos about the SIFT framework. And in the first video, I talked a little bit about why I'm embarking on this project and what my aims are. And in the second video, I gave an overview. And in both of those videos and this one as well, I'm pointing everyone back to the originator of the SIFT framework, and that is Mike Caulfield. And this is the first video where I'm actually using the SIFT framework on a specific story. And I recognize that I'm already making some errors in the process and I'm working to be transparent with that so that I can become better at it and potentially my mistakes might help other people as well. So the story that I came across last night, which was January the 7th, 2021 was about Apple from a website called Business Insider. And since I'm teaching that business ethics class, I thought, hey, this is this is a topic that we do discuss in this course. I've been teaching it for years now, and this comes up, the issue of, of both sex and labor trafficking. And so I thought, hey, this, this would be one that would be relevant and that I should go through and, and practice with. I have read many stories from Business Insider in the past, although I don't subscribe to their RSS feed, but it comes across as I'm reading different news apps. I was familiar with them, or so I thought. A little foreshadowing there. <laughs> and this is a topic that I know more than the average person might. And of course, is, is also something that I care about a lot and I also happen to own Apple products. So this, this wasn't the best one to do for my first SIF framework, but I'm committed to doing this and not just hemming and hawing about stuff. So here was my first mistake, not a great one to use, but I'm still gonna walk you through the SIF framework that I went through and talk a little bit about the process. So remember that the S in SIF stands for stop. Normally, if I would have come across this story and it's, you know, it's at night, I'm reading, I usually read on an iPad, by the way, which is made by Apple. And, and, I, and I just normally would have forwarded it, it to my friend, Sandy Morgan, who has been engaged in the fight against human trafficking for decades now. And she teaches classes on it and all of that. So it would have been, it's just very normal for me to exchange stories with her. I did not last night, but I normally would have. So I stopped myself and thought, hey, I'll go through the SIFT process before I pass it on to her. And, uh, but so I did the S and stop. And then as far as the I in SIFT, I investigated the source. And I mentioned I had read stories from Business Insider in the past, but I hadn't ever researched it as a source. And so I did the technique that Mike Caulfield taught me when I took the three hour SIFT modules. And I went to Wikipedia and I looked them up and it says, I'm quoting here, that Business Insider is an American financial and business news website founded in 2007. And since 2015, a majority stake in Business Insider's parent company has been owned by the German publishing house Axel Springer. It operates several international editions, including one in the United Kingdom. It's the next paragraph that became particularly relevant for this story. I won't read all of it, but it talks about in uh, 2011, it was maintaining a very liberal policy on the, on the use of anonymous sources. Uh, by the way, anonymous sources are not always a bad thing. So we just kind of tuck that away uh, it, it does not necessarily say anything about the credibility other than just tuck it away and tuck it away and kind of what can we learn about this? It both publishes original reporting and aggregates material from other outlets. And here's where, again, I'm, I'm collecting information. It publishes what's called native advertising. And also I'm quoting here from Wikipedia, granted sponsors editorial content Oh, editorial control of its content. And then they had a few examples where they have published stories that are factually incorrect. And finally, in these first couple of paragraphs of Wikipedia, I did not read the entire thing, by the way, because remember, we don't do the deep dives every single time we do this. So they have been criticized for using what is called clickbait to attract people to click, 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 click. So those are, those are, 
few things where I, I definitely learned some things about Business Insider I didn't know before. I don't, you know, when I think about, you know, where they may land in terms of a media source, it isn't that I think they go absolutely out of the realm. I should never read a story from them again. But I have a few things to keep in mind if and when I do read stories from them of just recognizing that I'll have to do a little bit more work in terms of seeing um, some of the other aspects of the SIFT process that I'll talk about as well. So after reading more, by the way, in the section in on Wikipedia about bias, reliability, and their editorial policy, I'm a little bit less confident about Business Insider as a source of credible news as I was prior to going through the process. So that's part of why we do it. So next up, we have find trusted coverage. So I'm moving away now temporarily from this one source. And I was able to go and look at the key claim that was being made in the headline, Apple knowingly relied on child labor for three years to cut costs. There's actually kind of multiple layers to the claims that are being made here. And I was not able to, you know, do an exact, here's a match to, here's a match. And again, looking back, the, the way in which they framed their headline was a little clickbaity here. <laughs> Maybe that's too extreme, but I just kind of looking at some of the other coverage that I looked at, uh, I kind of was left scratching my head a little bit. So I looked at a story from Reuters and they had one about Tesla, Apple, are among the firms that are accused in aiding of child labor in Congo. So that was in 2019, and it's not the same context or location being described here, but potentially a pattern. And we note that it wasn't just Apple, but also Tesla. And then CNN, around that same time, 2019, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Dell, and Tesla are sued over alleged child labor in Congo. That headline to me is one of the better ones in the sense of, you know, giving me more information than the other ones provided so that they were sued and, you know, the reasons why they were being sued, etc. And then Apple's insider responsibility report was mentioned in one or the other of those stories. And it's not like we, we instantly should just go, oh, of course, Apple says that they don't do it. So, of course, we you know, believe them and we'll scratch out all these other news stories. That's not the way that it works. What I found interesting when I went to go look at their 2019 statement on efforts to combat human trafficking and slavery in our business and supply chains, what I find notable in that is that they have acknowledged that these practices exist within their supplier chain and they specify the efforts that they are taking to attempt to combat those things. So again, I don't want to sound like somebody who's just gonna take what a company says and go with it, but I definitely think this is one of those stories that has a lot of nuance and a lot of complexity in it. And finally, I found all the way back from 2013, a story that I, I found particularly helpful from The Guardian. Uh, the Guardian, by the way, Guardian is one of the stories that Mike Caulfield talks about in the SIFT course, so I didn't have to go through every single one of these um, and, and, you know, find out, go to Wikipedia and find out more about the source. But anyway, so child labor uncovered in Apple's supply chain, and it was a good story to provide a little bit more context, although it was from a different time frame than was being described, both in the story I'm looking at, as well as the ones talking about the Congo issue. So the other kinds of sources that I found, I, I, I didn't get a lot, so I had to kind of start to modify my search because I went back to this specific supplier that was being named in this story. And so then I started getting into all these new sources that I read pretty much every day. I just put one of them here, it's nine to five Mac, but there were about five or six of the very popular 
tech blogs and, and news sites that are not general news sites, they're technology bloggers slash uh, news, news places. And so the story that I found that was the closest and the most helpful was from 9 to 5 Mac, although it's very similar to the other stories I saw. In 2020, they had a headline, Apple reluctant to ban suppliers guilty of labor violations can take years to do so. So that's a, a little bit of a preview there. The T in SIFT is trace claims, quotes, and media back to the original context. And so this entire thing, the whole story that we started out with here from Business Insider was pointing back, and so were these other stories pointing back to a news source, a report from an entity called The Information, which I didn't know anything about, had never heard of it before I started doing this research. And so I did my my wikipedia look and and i'm quoting from wikipedia about the information the information is a subscription based digital media company the information has tens of thousands of sub subscribers across 84 countries the information publishes daily articles and does not have any ads on its site again just because an entity has or does not have ads doesn't tell us in a binary way, it's these are all sort of clues that we can put together to get information. And all the way from, by the way, Business Insider, which does allow for basically selling space in their news to sponsors, this would be a very different business model where we don't take money from advertisers. People subscribe to our news source and that's our business model for generating revenue. So anyway, 2016, the Columbia Journalism Review reported that 10 of 11 most highly valued tech companies subscribe to the information. So this is more of an industry publication from my analysis and that tech companies subscribe to them. Big ones, I suspect probably small ones too. And so, uh, and then, um, yeah, so... I did not go and subscribe to the information. I, if they, I wanted to view the story, I had to give my email address. I wasn't super excited about that, but I did find other, other sort of clues from, from that little little venture that I had gone on. So there's, um, in a statement to the information. Oh, this is from Apple. Apple said its supplier code of conduct was the strongest in the industry and applied equally to all of its supplier chain partners. It further admitted that, quote, occasionally, close quote, its suppliers used temporary labor and that it monitored this use closely, quote, to ensure compliance with our code. Working with suppliers on corrective action plans where issues were found. So, a lot of these tech blogs that I was talking about were quoting directly from the report that was generated by the information. So what do I conclude about what I embarked on for this first of what I hope will be many SIFT examples? First of all, this was not a great one to start with. Thank you, Mike Caulfield. Should have listened to you. Just kind of forgot about that little tidbit. Second off, this is complex. This is, it's horrific that we have essentially modern day slavery that goes on around the world. And I do not want to come across as cold hearted or able to push that aside with what I'm about to say. The supply chain can be challenging for companies to be able to have the kind of rigor that is required to ensure that no child labor ever takes place in any instance. Uh, one of the things I came across in doing my reading is the use of temporary workers and that that is sometimes how these flagrant, um, maybe I shouldn't use the word flagrant, but these, these incidents of child labor occur here. So this is horrific. It's terrible that it happens. I, I just hope that I can get across that it is nuanced in the sense of I don't believe, either, I didn't believe before reading this, but I don't believe after doing this analysis that Apple is doing this, 
in a way that means that they don't care about it as people, as human beings, that I do believe when their founder says that this is not okay and, and that here's the measures we're taking, the transparency with which they shared what they had uncovered and the steps that they were taking and the regular accountability that they have with reporting back. Um, yeah, and, and maybe that's all me saying I'm going to continue to purchase Apple products because they're so many of these suppliers sell to the same companies it was mentioned dell tesla microsoft google and again i, I don't want to say everybody else is doing it so it's okay but this is definitely a big issue and it, it sh this shouldn't even be what i'm doing by the way i'm back to the s and stop is we have to think about the purpose of why we're doing this why are we going through sift and my purpose of analyzing this article was not to think through as a consumer every single aspect of my purchases as it might relate to this. I mean, and by the way, we do talk about it in the class, but for this specific exercise, it was my first time going through SIFT in a public way and I wanted to do my due diligence. I definitely fell into the trap of not doing a shallow dive. And part of that is because I care so much about this issue and I know a lot about it. And part of it is because I'm deciding to share these with you and it feels vulnerable and, and that words that I say could be taken out of context. Hmm, isn't that ironic <laughs> since, since uh, in the SIFT process we discover when other words are taken out of context. So I do wanna think about that purpose of this particular specific exercise and give myself a little bit of room here. And I was speaking about the nine to five Mac having the um, best sort of take on it as far as um, it's, a, it's a good article. I'll put it in the notes so if you wanted to take a look at it as well. So thanks for joining me for this video. This is this is hard. <laughs> this, I knew it was going to be hard. And I don't know what I'll be doing for my next video, but I, I mean, I'll be walking through the SIFT framework again, but I don't know what story I'll do because I'm just going to keep reading the news. And as I come across things that would relate to a business ethics class, I'm gonna go through the SIF framework. I'm gonna learn some things and I'm gonna make mistakes. And here we are. Thanks for joining me.